When you start feeding your pet a raw diet, it can feel like any mistake could be dangerous for your pet or even you. And unfortunately, sometimes it's true. The reality is feeding raw is completely different from feeding commercial food. And some things that are considered safe to do when feeding commercial food aren't always safe to do when feeding raw food. So let's go over some things you should never do when raw feeding. Number one, encouraging them to eat by putting your hand near their food. This is a big no-no, regardless of the food that you feed. But it's something that new raw feeders tend to do when trying to encourage their pet to eat something. Putting your hand in, around, or on your pet's food will promote resource guarding, which is when the animal guards their food. This can be as seemingly harmless as standing over the food or as serious as biting your hand. And honestly, even I was guilty of doing this in the beginning. When Matsu was six to seven months old, he went through a phase that adolescent pets sometimes go through where they start acting a little picky. This made mealtime kind of stressful, and I found myself wanting to point at Matsu's bowl to encourage him to eat. I knew this was wrong. I've been working with dogs for years at that point. Why did I do that? Obviously, this made mealtime stressful for Matsu too, and he started to show guarding behaviors. Luckily, he got out of his picky phase, and I worked with him through the behavioral issues that I accidentally created. So if your pet starts getting picky, don't encourage them to eat by putting your hand near their food. Instead, try adding tasty meal toppers or maybe just waiting to feed them until they're a little hungrier. Number two, feeding large frozen pieces of meat or bone. There are many reasons why owners would gravitate towards feeding meats frozen. Some pets like certain cuts better when frozen because it firms up the texture. Some pets eat too fast when everything is thawed, so freezing it helps slow them down. And sometimes it's just to help scrape tartar off their teeth a bit better. No matter the reason, doing this can be dangerous. Why? Choking. Years ago, when I was browsing a raw feeding group, I saw a video of a dog eating. In the description, the owner said that her dog was a gulper, which means he would consume his food quickly without chewing. So the owner decided to freeze everything together so he had no choice but to chew a huge chunk. Well, he didn't, and instead tried swallowing the entire piece. He choked a few times while attempting to swallow it, but in the end, he realized he couldn't and started chewing it into smaller pieces. This was great, but he still was in a very risky position of truly choking. So if you're going to feed meats frozen, make sure they're either small enough for them to be swallowed whole or large enough for it to be impossible to swallow without chewing. Number three, letting raw food sit out for long periods of time. When you feed a commercial diet, it's common for owners to just put the bowl down and walk away, where it's free for their pet to graze on whenever they want. Well, this isn't something you can do with raw food because, well, it's raw meat. And if raw meat sits out at room temperature for too long, bacteria will start to rapidly multiply. Our pet's bodies are designed to handle the bacteria in raw meat, but meat that begins to rot will eventually accumulate too much bacteria for their bodies to handle. Now, there are some instances where some things can be left out longer than others. For example, whole prey can be left out much longer than raw grinds. Grinding meat exposes a lot of its surface area, and according to the USDA, bacteria is likely to be mixed in the meat during the grinding process. Does this make it unsafe to feed? Not at all. But it does mean that the bacterial load may be slightly higher than whole chunks of meat and whole prey. On the other hand, the raw flesh and organs within a whole prey animal are sealed up inside their body. So naturally, it will take a bit longer for the bacteria to enter and multiply. So if your pet hasn't touched their food within the hour, it's best to just place it back in the fridge and try again later. Well, these are my things. Is there anything you've learned that you should or shouldn't do when raw feeding your pet? If so, I want to know, and I'm sure other raw feeders would love a heads up too. So let us know in the comments.